How's uh, my friend, my friend Charlie Rangel? He's a friend. Is he safe? Uh, I, I think Charlie. I think Charlie is safe. I mean, the people the of Harlem, and all that? people of Harlem have great love for him, and I think that he's dealt with, or still in the process of dealing with, uh, uh, various and sundry questions around accounting and, and whatnot. But I, I think at the end of the day, uh, the good that Charlie has done far outweighs some regrettable mistakes that he's made in the past. One thing I think Obama did correctly, by the way, is he tried to close the door on the CIA uh, leaks and not prosecute the lawyers. I don't think it's smart to open that up. I think it's just a Pandora's box. And you, you only have so much time as a, as, a, as a president, you know, to get things done. And it's not going to do anything. And the legal issues there, we did a whole show on it last week are so strongly in favor of those who give honest opinions that I don't think anything will happen. But politics is politics. Senators see cameras and they make hearings. So what's your guess? There'll be hearings on this stuff? Well, let me say I absolutely agree with you. I think it would be a huge mistake to go after criminal prosecutions. I think it would be a mistake to divert the country's time and attention and resources towards digging into this. I think that the best way to handle it would be some type of commission right some type, and, and i am not a big fan of blue ribbon presidential commissions where issues go to die do you think the warren commission knows who killed the kennedy <laughs> yeah. I, I i always thought it was lee harvey oswald how about mark lane you remember that name Mark Lane? Yeah. How many people remember Mark Lane? He was a lawyer who was uh, all the time investigating the, uh, the assassination of uh, Kennedy. Nobody remembers his name today. When they write a, a magazine on fortune of people who forgot their names, uh, he'll be in Mark that Lane's list. at the yeah. top of the list? Yeah, he'll be one of them. Nobody remembers him. Uh, you know, people just forget that this guy was fighting all the time for... Uh, he had theories about who, can, can, who killed Kennedy. But the Warren Commission most people may not remember was a very famous commission set up by Lyndon Johnson to discover who uh, murdered uh, John Kennedy. I, I don't know if it's been published yet. Maybe it's still in Chimera, which we call in hiding or secret. I don't know. But uh, bring me back to uh, Obama. I think, you know, he's doing fairly well, but I think he's going to get a little bit tough or tripped a little bit in the Middle East and in Afghanistan and Pakistan. I think these are rough areas for him to handle today. And there's a guy viscerally who's against sending uh, foot, uh, foot soldiers out there or, troop, uh, you know, uh, troops on the ground, boots on the ground. And I don't know how he's going to work his way out of that. And do you have any feelings on Afghanistan and Pakistan? These are dangerous areas today. Yeah, it's, it, that is where the next stage in this war is. And frankly, it's where the war should have been all along. But, you know, I uh, was with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff not long ago, and he spent far more time talking about... Is he from the Navy, the, McMullen? The, uh, uh, yes. Uh, he spent far more time talking about the need to build up democratic institutions and organizations in Afghanistan because ultimately we will not find a military solution in Afghanistan. It's impossible. The only way forward for the United States and for Afghanistan is to strengthen the basic structures of society to support democracy in that region because it's ultimately going to be a political solution, not a military solution. And that's really what we have to do. Now, the Marines that are there have got to go out and provide stability and hunt down more of the bad guys to allow those democratic institutions to flourish. And ultimately, what we need here is a better understanding of opinion on the ground, not just military intelligence, but the type of intelligence that I provide to political candidates or companies that is understanding what's in the hearts and minds of the Afghani people so we can get a better feeling for how to help build that society back because we're going to do it uh, through the ballot box and through community organizations, not not really through you don't uh, the think, military. You don't ultimately. think the United States is doing that? You don't think they're polling over there? I think we've got a long way to go really? in terms of using public opinion uh, to help inform our but decision. You, I remember Jimmy Carter during the Camp David uh, business. Uh, they had polls showing that most uh, Israelis wanted to have a, a peace with Egypt. Uh, they had polling, and we worked off of that. All right, we had a cup for break. We'll come back and... Get some more wisdom out of a Democratic strategist. If they pay him more, maybe he'll become Republican. There's more upside now, but we'll check with him because he's now got 
a filibuster-proof Senate to work with. That could be dangerous. Probably. Almost. Almost. Boy, right, who you got left? Well, we got to get seated with Franken. Oh, Franken from <laughs> Minneapolis, the comedian. We'll be right back. We're back. <coughs> Excuse me. We're back. We're talking with Bernie Whitman, who is a Democratic strategist, and you're long his stock today because they're in vogue and they're really going to make it. Tell me, we've got two senators up there in Maine who, who are very uh, not-so-religious Republicans. You think they'll move, too? What, the, the, the lady, what's her name up there? Susan Collins. And the other one? They have two, no? And they are always... Um, Olympia Snow and Susan right, Collins. Right. Uh, that has got to be the loneliest position because there's two <laughs> moderates left in the Republican Party. They both happen to be women, and they both happen to be uh, from the Northeast. You know, we don't have a single... Uh, congressional representative in the U.S. House of Representatives from New England in the Republican Party. There's none. I know. The Northeast is completely Democratic. Uh, but and the number of Republican congressmen in New York has been cut in half. All right. Specter, what kind of committee does he get now? They're still dabbling over that, aren't they? Yeah, he was just actually named, I believe, as a subcommittee chair this afternoon of? in a bit of a face saving. I didn't catch it. It was the opportunism they, they committee. To... <laughs> you know, look, he he looked out at the electorate and said, I don't want my 40 plus years of public service defined and determined by a narrow, increasingly conservative primary electorate that's made up of sort of right wing uh, Republicans, and I think that that's a, a very fair uh, basis upon which to, you know, to jump parties. Joe Lieberman, where is he now? Is he independent? Yeah, Democrat? he's Does he, is he in, with the Democrats. He's independent, but he caucuses with the Dems. And has he got a uh, chairmanship? Uh, His mother-in-law watches the show. I know, so be careful. I I, do, I don't know. I don't know either. Isn't that something? Right into us, you get a Leon Chani cup if you know what kind of committee Joe Lieberman has. He probably has a chairmanship. I think Obama uh, put his two cents in and, and said that he should have some chairmanship. Well, there, you know, there's a lot of people in the Democratic Party that wanted to kick him out, that is, not allow him to caucus. Now, there's one thing to hold grudges. There's another thing to be pragmatic. And, and ultimately, uh, the Democrats will certainly need him on a whole range of issues, particularly if things get... Uh, tough and nasty. Yes, if they get in foreign policy, they need him very badly, you know, and uh, especially in Pakistan, Afghanistan. I mean, he, he's he's a guy who was committing troops all the time. I mean, he was a McCain guy, basically. He was uh, running around with the guy from North Carolina, Lindsey Graham, and these three were a triumvirate. Uh, at, and McCain is pretty uh, outspoken now. I mean, he's not lost in the crowd, and he's a respected guy. 